Aloha and welcome to another Roland MC707 tutorial. I am Unit E and in this video I wanted to talk to you about a way to capture or playback audio from your PC or laptop into the 707 without the use of a DAW. This can be done through the system sounds. So it could be done on your Windows Media Player or Quick time or iTunes or any of those things. Even YouTube and internet will work. I'm going to show you how to set it up. You decide how to use it. The first thing you're going to want to do, and I will show you here, is if you press Shift and Nava Sign, go to your system settings using Enter. Under the Control tab, scroll down using the cursor or your C3 to USB driver you'll see it is set to vendor. Now with vendor, what happens is you cannot run the PC input through USB into here. What happens is, if you look here, I have the MC707 as one of my input and one of my output devices. So with it like that, that is good and I can play something. Let's see, I have some jungle atmosphere here. We'll bring those into the picture too so you can see what I'm playing with. I just have two instances of quick time with a couple ambient stuff in there. So we'll get this playing and you'll notice it will come through the MC707. You adjust it with the volume control here, but it is not in the PC level, because if you go to Shift Project and then your System Settings, on the PC tab you can see PC Level. That means this USB coming in sound. Generally with a DAW, you could dial this up and down, you would hear it. But you'll notice that you cannot hear it, when I, or you can still hear it when I turn down. Let me show you, I'll bring something else in. So here the main volume does it but the PC level is not affecting anything. So it's not seeing it as a PC input. It is just passing it through right to the outputs. Okay, so what you have to do now, shift and knob assign, utility menu, system settings, USB driver, that's in vendor. That's great if you're using a DAW and you're multi-tracking. This is what you want to have now. If you turn it to generic, it will ask you to reboot your device before this will take effect, and you will have to do this. So we're going to take a brief moment while we reboot. So turn it to generic, hit exit to get out of that menu, and then power cycle your MC707. You'll notice when you power it back on, under your sound settings, you now have a different output called audio out. It no longer says the MC707. If you are working on a Windows PC, it might say something a little different, like Audio 2, and then have an MC707 in a parentheses. This is the one you want. So go ahead and choose that for your output. Like that. Now with that as the audio out, we are running it through the PC in of the USB on the 707. So now what we should be able to do is if we hit Shift and Project, scroll over using C4 or the cursors to Settings, get back to your PC in, and then we can check it from here. So let's go ahead and start these up again. A little quieter. Now let's watch when we move the level down. It now affects your level up and down. We are now sending the PC in. You can stop here and you see now in the PC in you have PC delay send and reverb send. So we could get that up so you can now have some reverb and delay on your PC input coming in. Whatever it happens to be. 
like that. Or something I want to show you, which is much better, is assign a new track. I'll take track five here, make it a tone track by hitting enter or C4 as a knob. Then immediately press shift and select for that track. And the first thing you want to do is set your sound source to clip. And then use C3 to scroll down and set your audio insert to PC in left, right. Once you've set that up, exit out. And then go back into your project menu with shift project. Even project works. You don't have to shift it. Go to your settings. Now turn your PC level all the way down. You do this because this is similar to the external inputs where they have kind of their own channel coming in that is independent of all these faders and have nothing to do with that. But if you assign the PC or the external input to one of these tracks, you will now be sending it to two sources or you'll have volume coming through two places. If I was to keep the PC level up and turn this up, you would hear it doubling or phasing like this and then you would hear just the one coming through. With this one turned off, now we will get just the PC input through here. So let's give it a try. We'll go ahead and start it up. Don't know if we hear that one. Let's get this one going. We know we can hear this one. There we go. Now we could hear the jungle one too. Project level is always good to bring up to 127. So let's turn the PC level in up and see what it does. You can hear it doubles up. If I turn this down, turn that up. Now it's coming through its own channel. The nice thing about having this in this mode, two reasons. Now, since we've assigned the PC to a track, we get all the benefits of the track. If I press shift and sound, you have all these options here, but what I'm interested in is the effect. Now you can set an effect to any of these, something you'll definitely hear. Let's do a Ottawa, you're guaranteed to hear that. With that on, we'll go ahead and play our flute again. So you can hear now the Ottawa. We give it a humanizer. You get it without destroying your ears and messing around too much with this. You can see you can add an effect right to the PC input coming in. The nice thing about having that setting, that shift track select setting of clip, is now if I were to create a second clip here and then press shift sound, I've created a new clip where I can have a new effect. So if you use this just as an input signal for the PC, you can stack 16 different effects in your clips and switch between them to add effects to whatever you are playing on your computer. Remember, doing it this way is for use with MP3 players on there or capturing or playing through video clips, audio of video clips, or if you do not have yourself a DAW this can be helpful. So keep in mind with it set to clip as your sound source on that track you'll have 16 different effects if you would like. Not at once but one after the other. If you happen to have a looper track set up you'll want to set up the uh, recording track to be the track of your input 
So if the PC is coming in on 5, I want my recording source to be 5. Because what I could do there, now that I got track 5, if I get this thing playing all the way from the beginning, even with a bit of jungle noise in it, right? So we'll get some jungle noise going. We should start seeing it show up there as we bring the level up. This will confirm we're actually getting it through the system. And then we'll bring this flute way down because it does get loud. And then I want to hit enter to trigger it so I could capture a little bit of this. So we'll take that right there. That was quite a bit. That's okay. We can take what we want out of it, but just so you can see that it's here, I'm going to give it a quick normalize to the negative two decibels. Bring that level up. Now, if I'm sampling drums and bringing those in, I might normalize to zero dB, but everything else I want to bring a little lower. So now we could take a listen to it. So we're able to capture that little ambient texture of flute and jungle atmosphere. And there you have it. You have that to do as with you wish if you wanted to export it or put it onto a looper track or keep it in a tone track. That's up to you. I'm not here to show you what to do with it after. That's your creativeness. I'm just showing you how to get your PC to come into the 707 and to set yourself up to capture any of it. Again, I do want to reiterate that this is for a non-DAW purpose. This is also the setting you will need if you are running through an iPad or any sort of tablet using your generic driver. But using the generic driver on a PC or laptop will allow you to capture the system sounds, which includes internet, QuickTime, Windows player, all that stuff, your DVD player, whatever you want. You'll be able to play through and capture. I hope you found this very helpful. And if you did, give it a thumbs up to spread the word about it. Go ahead and hit subscribe to stay on top of all the videos that I'll be bringing out for you on all different sorts of gear. And ring that bell to keep notified of all those videos. And as always, thanks for watching.